Hello. This week's Torah portion, Tetzaveh, begins with instructions for the kindling of the menorah in the tabernacle. Quote, you shall further command the Israelites to bring to you pure oil from crushed olives for lighting, for kindling lamps, continually. Only olive oil must be used, not any other kind. Why? The Jewish people are frequently compared to olives. The prophet Jeremiah compares Israel to an olive tree. Quote, the Lord has called you a leafy olive tree, beautiful with choice fruit. In the same vein, King David writes in the book of Psalms, but as for me, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the very heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Why this analogy? The Talmud, Midrash, and other sources find many reasons for it. First, olives must be squeezed hard to yield their oil. Likewise, the Jews must be beaten, oppressed, and persecuted before they repent and release their full potential of strength and wisdom for the benefit of the world. Second, an olive is first bitter, then tasty. Likewise, the Jews suffer now, but will enjoy great good in the world to come. Third, oil does not mix with other liquids. Likewise, the Jews are unique and separate from all other nations. In the Torah, the Gentile prophet Balaam says, quote, Israel is a nation that will dwell alone and will not be reckoned among the nations. Fourth, always, oil is always on top of other liquids. Likewise, the Jews are the chosen people and will always be morally guiding the world if they follow the Torah. Indeed, the Torah says, quote, now, if you obey the Lord your God and observe, observe faithfully all his commandments, he will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Unquote. Fifth, oil provides light. So do the Jews, giving the light of Torah to the world. The prophet Isaiah says, and nations shall walk by your light. I, God, will give you as a light to the nations. Sixth, oil spreads on anything it is poured on. So do the Jews. They spread all over the world, usually out of necessity, and are always curious and eager to acquire new knowledge. Seventh, the leaves of the olive tree do not fall off. Likewise, the Jews will never be cast off, neither in this world nor in the world to come. Also, Jews remain Jews when times are hard. Eighth, the olive branch is a symbol of peace. Likewise, the Jews are not warlike. The Torah says that when you must wage war, you must first propose a peaceful settlement to the enemy. Ninth, the olive tree is a survivor. Even in difficult terrain, it can last as much as 1,500 years. On average, it lasts 500 years. Likewise, the Jews have survived much and are here to stay. Some questions come to mind. First, how can Jews spread the lights if they don't mix with non-Jews? The Maharal of Prague, 16th century scholar, said that non-Jews are like water, whereas Jews are like fire. Indeed, the psalmist says, release me and rescue me from great waters from the hand of strangers. And the Torah says, God came from Sinai and preserved, presented the fiery Torah to them with his right hand. Now, when fire and water mix, the water extinguishes the fire, unless there is a barrier between them. Only with that barrier can the fire heat up the water and bring it to a boil. So too with the Jews and the nations. Our mission is to heat up and ignite the world with a passion for God and his moral laws. We can do this 
if we remain separate from our neighbors. If we remove the barrier, our fire will be extinguished by the waters of assimilation, and we will fail in our mission to bring light to the nations. Second, does anti-Semitism preserve Judaism? As we saw, the Midrash said that Jews must be oppressed before they yield their wisdom, just as olives must be squeezed hard to yield their oil. Is the pressure of persecution what motivates Jews to excel, to show the world? Note that Jews do not welcome suffering. The Talmud says, Rabbi Yohanan fell ill. Rabbi Hanina entered to visit him and said to him, is your suffering dear to you? Rabbi Yohanan replied, I welcome neither suffering nor its reward. Unquote. A convincing case can be made that anti-Semitism helps preserve Judaism. This is a subject of another presentation. Shabbat Shalom.